Hi, today we're going to cut some candy ghost buttons inspired by the ones you see right here. And we already have these gradient options that we're going to randomly assign to the buttons that we're going to generate out of this object. So you can see we have the text for the buttons and we also have the icons for the buttons. Let's create them. So for let p in that buttons object, right? we create a button at each step, we put the text in it, and we're also going to have an attribute where we put the icon. So that's going to be the value at P. And we're also going to pass to the CSS the list of stops for the gradient. So we're going to randomly get one out of that uh, array. But first, let's get the length of the array. So M going to be the length of the array and then here we're going to generate a random index this is going to be random multiplied with that m and we're going to floor this product so that we get an integer which we need for the index and then in a style attribute we're going to have this uh, stop list as a custom property and we set it to the value at that index and of course it needs to be like that okay now let's see the compiled html you can see we have the icons we have those stop lists good now let's move on to prefy things we're going to have our button elements right first off they are going to have an after pseudo element in which we're going to put that uh, icon so we're going to use that uh, attribute where we stored the icon. Next, uh, we are going to have text transform uppercase font inherit, for example. Uh, we're going to have border. Actually, uh, let's make the border width. So let's set it right here, something like that. And we are going to make this transparent right uh, let's say that we're going to have a bigger font so font something like that okay it, it looks weird but yeah uh, we'll live with it for now and we are also going to set the border radius pretty big value, something like that. Uh, let's also set the padding, something like that, so we can have some bigger buttons. I think those are actually too big like that. <laughs> let's make them 2Ms. They're going to look less grotesque. Let's also set a background. Um, this is going to be linear gradient and we want it diagonally so it's going to be to right bottom and then we're going to use that stop list right oh uh, well, let's get rid of the border radius for a little bit because i want to show you something um you can see how it looks like our gradient is restricted to that uh, inner box right there and then it just repeats itself now that is the border. Let's do something for layout because it just uh, set display grid on both the body and the bottom but I should spell that properly. Uh, here we are going to have grid uh, template columns sorry uh, repeat auto fit I was already thinking about something else 12 M's and if you don't know what the deal with auto fit is there is also auto fill uh, there's an interactive demo which I'll be linking to I also wrote an article about uh, grid tricks and stuff like that now the deal is you can see here the difference between auto fit the top uh, version and auto fill the bottom one and of course we have other options other than centro for example, we can have space around, something like that, or just uh, space between, and they go to the edges, 
right? So yeah, you can play with those and so on. They're all going to be linked in the description. Now the thing is, uh, I wanted to set that and also let's set a grid gap. Uh, and we're going to want to have a different grid gap uh, horizontally and vertically. So let's say something like that. Okay, and here we're going to have grid auto flow column and then grid um, gap, sorry. Let's say something like that. Okay, let's also set place self center. Okay, now we have a bit of space between them and you can see, so that area around, that is the border area. And you can see it a bit better in this uh, box model. So we have the border box, this uh, gold, orange, whatever you want to call it. That's the border area, right? This is the padding area, this red right here. And here is the content box. Now the padding box, you can see is limited by the padding limit, right? Border box limited by the border limit. The border area is between the padding limit and the border limit. Okay, so this is the box model and this is something you need to keep in mind for pretty much everything that we'll be doing today. So why does it look like our background just covers the padding box and then it repeats outside of it? Well, that's because of a property called background origin. This uh, property uh, takes a box value. So it can be padding box, it can be border box. By default, it's padding box. And that means that its box value, the top left corner of its box value, is the top left corner from where we start with the background position. So the zero, 00 for background position means the top left corner of the box value for background origin. So if background origin is padding box, then the zero, 00 point for background position is the top left corner of the padding box. If background origin is border box, then the zero, 00 point for background position is the top left corner of the border box. So that's what we need to change right now because this background um, origin box also determines the dimensions of the box that the background size is relative to. So 100%, 100% means the size of the padding box if background origin is set to padding box. But 100%, 100% means the size of the border box if background origin is set to the border box. So that's uh, what we need to change right here. So let's set background origin to border box. Now, setting a single value there also changes background clip to that uh, value, sets background clip to that value. But it doesn't really matter because the default for background clip is border box anyway. So, yeah. Now, having done this, you can see how the background now nicely covers everything, but we still have that transparent border. We still have that border area around, and that's what we'll be using to just uh, get a gradient border. So we'll be masking the padding area. Let's get back here. So we'll be masking the padding box. Now, how do we do that? Because uh, we don't have a way of just uh, keeping the border and masking out everything else. But we do have a technique called mask compositing. This means we can have multiple mask layers and apply a compositing operation between them. And uh, this is going to give us a result. Now, if we have two mask layers, one with an alpha of one absolutely everywhere across the border box, right? and then we have another mask layer, one with a value of one all across the padding box, but a value of zero in the border area, right? Now, if we composite them with this exclude operation, then this value, this is the formula, but 
if we only have values of 0 and 1, so fully transparent means an alpha of 0, and we have an alpha of 1 everywhere else, right? So we have an alpha of 1 for both layers in the padding box uh, area, and an alpha of 1 for the bottom layer in the border area, and an alpha of 0 for the top layer in the border area. And this uh, compositing operation is basically like a XOR. So if the two values are identical, both 0 or both 1, the result is 1. If they're different, the result, uh, if they're different, the result is 1. If they're identical, the result is 0. In case I said that wrong before. I think I did. Okay, so we can actually look at this in 3D. So you can see we have this box model. And one really cool thing about uh, masking things this way is that uh, the mask is going to follow the border radius, right? So if we have a border radius, that's going to be respected. So if we have the padding area with uh, an alpha of 1, right, then that's going to be the padding box with that rounding. And then the border box is going to have that rounding if we have uh, a border radius. So now let's look at them in 3D and you can see how we have an alpha of 1 everywhere there for the top layer and around it in the border area we have an alpha of 0. By contrast here we have an alpha of 1 for the entire layer. So that means we composite this in the padding area right and we have 1 and 1 with this ex exclude operation which is like XOR. 1 and 1 gives us a result 0 and in the border area, we have 1 for the bottom layer and 0 for the top layer. And they're different, so that means the result is going to be 1. So let's do just that. Uh, we are first going to just have a full coverage gradient. And this is going to be a linear gradient. And it's going to have an alpha of 1 everywhere. So we just make it red everywhere. It doesn't matter. Right, so then we are going to have... this uh, mask, we're going to have padding box and right, you can see how it got a tiny bit smaller but now if we add the other layer which covers the entire border box you're going to see how they get slightly bigger again you saw that? okay, and now we are going to mask composite and now WebKit browsers use the non-standard version, which is actually called XOR. The standard version is, as I've shown before, exclude, right? Now let's get back here. This is not what we want because we don't have the text anymore. So we are going to add the text. We're going to add a third mask layer. And this one is going to be restricted to the text. So it's going to be very similar to what we have right here except we are going to have text so we restricted the mask clip value is going to be text right uh, the thing is now we have that uh, black color and so we're seeing through to fix that we are going to uh, use text fill color and this one is going to be transparent and now you can see how we have those nice gradient let's make this smaller and one thing I want to show you here is that we have real transparency so let's say we're going to have a background and repeating linear gradient 45 degrees let's say um, black 0 1 M and then also something slightly lighter than black something like that and now you can see it. Uh, let's also set place content center. Okay, um, let's put them in the middle vertically as well. So let's explicitly set the height to the full viewport height because at this point the height of the body is given by the height of its content. So let's do that. Let's get rid of the ugly scroll bar which is caused by a margin around the body, so 
if we zero that margin we get rid of the scroll bar okay now this looks nice like that okay so having done this the problem with this you may have seen I've only set uh, the WebKit mask part I haven't set the standard one and the thing is text is a non-standard mask clip value so you can see it here non-standard so it's not going to work in Firefox so there's no point in putting the standard version but we want something cross-browser so let's see what other options we have for getting the same effect now we are going to have three options the first we've already coded and the next two so we're going to have a loop here for let i going from zero all the way up to three incremented at every step and create a section element right and um, indent this part properly okay now having done this we are going to need to move a few styles on the section from the body so um, for example that and let's also say we set that uh, display grid let's also set grid gap I don't know something like that should do it okay now having done this I think we can uh, collapse these and uh, we are not going to need anything else here we are going to have so nth child one so in the first section right we are going to have that uh, mask and then we are going to have some uh, different options around here so here let's uh, take that uh, part out and let's um, okay so the second one here we are going to have a before pseudo element which we're going to absolutely position because we wanted to cover the entire grid and we have no way for uh, to set the grid uh, area for the text we have no way of putting something overlapping the text that is the problem so first for that position relative here position absolute here uh, we are going to set an inset value and by the way these inset values are from the edge from from the padding limit so if we wanted to cover the entire border box and zero is along the padding limit then we need to go outwards so it minus an entire border width so inset is going to be minus the border width so it covers the entire border box okay uh, we are also going to inherit the border we're going to inherit the border radius we're going to inherit the background uh, right so here we are going uh, to set background clip text right uh, there we're going to just uh, drop that uh, mask of course nothing's going to work without the content and here we are also going to need the webkit version right like that okay now you can see how we have that but it's not shown and that's because inheriting the background also inherits this background clip so we need to fix that background clip let's revert it to border box and now we have our nice pill buttons right now there's one more technique which you're probably screaming at me to do and that is border image 
The problem with border image is that it doesn't play nice with border radius. So let's say we have this um, element with a border radius. You can see how it's nice and round. But if we also add a border image, the border radius just gets cancelled. It doesn't work anymore. So that's uh, the issue. We cannot have those uh, nice roundings. But even without the roundings, let's see the border radius technique. So there is no way to get those spill roundings with the border image. So uh, let's make one more change here. We're going to take this and this is going to be a gradient custom property, which we're going to set right here. Okay, and here we're going to have border image Now, of course, that's not going to be seen because we have uh, everywhere. Oh, actually, you can see something. So you can see how the background gets rounded, right? But the border doesn't, which looks really weird. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Now, here we're going to take that. Oh, not uh, cut it, just uh, copy it. So we're going to put it there, right? And you can see how we have that nice gradient border. Now we can round it a tiny little bit, but not that much if uh, we use clip path and inset. Now the inset function can take four values, three values, two values, one value, and it's exactly like the margin. If it takes four, then those are top, right, bottom, left. If it takes three, then those are top, lateral, bottom. If it takes two, then those are vertical and horizontal. If it takes one, then that's all of them. But this inset function can also have a second part, a rounding part. And that sets a rounding which is in the format of a border radius. And this rounding is set on this clipping rectangle. So let's uh, do just that. We are going to have zero inset all around because we don't want to, we want to stay along the edges of the border box and we're going to have a tiny bit of rounding and I'm saying a tiny bit of rounding which is going to be at most the border width uh, we use a little rounding not more because when we use this sub um, clip path rounding the inner border doesn't get rounded only the outer one so let me just show you that clip path inset is going to be zero and then we have the second round part which we set to the border width and now you can see a bit of rounding there i think it's going to be more obvious if we increase the font size right now you can see how we have a bit of rounding there and the thing is if we made it a lot bigger so for example something like 5ms you can see the inner border doesn't get rounded and it looks really weird like that, which is why we can have only a tiny bit of rounding if we use border image. So that's the thing. Um, now, one thing maybe I didn't point out here, if we have a border radius, then this is the rounding of the border box. The rounding of the padding box is that border radius that we set minus the border width. Now, in our case, if we set that uh, rounding to the border width, then they're equal, so their difference is going to be zero. So basically, the rounding of the padding box is going to be zero as long as this R value, which is either the border radius or the rounding in clip path, as long as that is smaller or equal to the border width. So that's the thing. This is what I wanted to show you for today. Let's just uh, make them smaller once more because they look a bit hideous that big. But uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. Or if monthly support is not your style, there's the option of a one-time donation. 
or you can make the stray cat happy with the gift of her wish list, or you could be share this to show the role of Kimi Nami CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!